everybody, this is Ryan Lockett with a digital painting tutorial video where I'm going to talk a little bit about how I paint in Photoshop and it's one of the things I promised I would do on my recent Kickstarter for Above and Below. And If you haven't seen that yet, I'd urge you to go check it out. Um, I'll have a link below. It's my new board game. It's sort of a mix of village building and um, exploration where it has a storytelling element. Every time you explore this huge cave, you read out of a book, and it gives you like a random adventure. So it's a lot of fun. We're having a lot of success with that, and I'm really excited about it. So go and check it out. Right here, what I've got is um, a card for the game, and I'm painting it in Photoshop, and it'll. I, I'm hoping to give you a few tips. I'm actually just going to go ahead and start drawing because, um, you know, I've got a lot to say. This is actually the first of, I'm hoping, many videos that will help people, um, if they're interested in, in doing digital art, it'll kind of give them a few tips. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do that is because when I was interested in learning this and sort of starting out, um, I had to rely a lot on video uh, videos on YouTube because I didn't have any... Um, traditional education really I, it was just sort of a hobby for me and it really helped me to watch those videos and I learned different things from different videos and different people you know and I would I would look at their artwork as well and study it and it would give me a little an idea of uh, what I should do um, and so uh, you know it really it was awesome so right now I'm drawing uh, so this card, it gives a bonus in, in the village. This is one of your buildings in your village. And it gives a bonus for um, having ore and um, potions. So I was thinking maybe it's going to be sort of a blacksmith slash alchemist hut. you know. And I'm not exactly sure what I want it to look like. I'm basically just kind of sketching and we'll see what happens. Um, so now one thing I wanted to talk about and a lot of people ask me about is you know how do you do this how, how are you painting what are the materials you're using and what are the programs you're using and basically I just use Photoshop I've tried some other things but Photoshop is really comfortable for me and you know when I started using Photoshop back in high school I really it, it seemed strange to me that people could could paint in in this program it didn't seem obvious how it could be done and it took me years really of just kind of messing around in the program to to figure out how I could do it and I'm always learning new things you know I'm always changing the way I do things but uh, um, that's kind of what I love about you know being an artist is you can always improve you can always learn so basically um, I've got a few tips as I sketch this out and let's see if I can remember them all. Um, the first thing if you want to be a, a digital artist, a, a painter, is to get a Wacom tablet. And this is what I've got is a, the uh, Cintiq model which is actually a screen which you can look at and draw on. But you know what, I, I don't even use the screen anymore. Um, I used it at first but now I turn it off and just look at the computer screen because it's bigger and better and the colors are a lot better and you know it, it, it's it's nice when your hand isn't in the way if you can learn to look at the screen and not have to look where you're drawing it it saves a, you know it ends up saving a lot of time so um, you know it's it's weird to get used to but it's something I recommend artists do so you really I mean, the short answer is you don't need to get the Cintiq. Um, you can get by on the, you know, just um, some of their other models that aren't aren't a screen. So the second thing I, I would say is, um, you know, become familiar with Photoshop, and there are so many awesome tutorials online that can tell you all about it. Um, one of the things that I really use quite a lot and is really powerful in Photoshop is the, um, the ability to do layers. So basically, 
on the right here, you can see on the bottom right corner are, are a bunch of layers and they're basically, you know, every time I, I paint a new object or, um, you know, I want to have something that can, I can easily move around, um, I put it in a new layer and all these different icons are their own layer so I can easily move them around um, you know this 11 is its own layer the grass is its own layer the sky um, some of these icons at the bottom and I even made a new layer um, so I could sketch this building okay so the next tip I would give any you know beginning digital artist is um, you know you're maybe you'll you'll get Photoshop you'll get a, a tablet and you'll be sitting down to um, start out and you're trying to experiment and see what looks good you're gonna be tempted to use the soft edge brush but I would highly recommend that you use a hard edge brush there are so many different brushes in Photoshop and you can actually make you know it, it has the ability to make any any brush you want by applying textures and, and it has different options and stuff like that. It's really powerful. But I would say um, <clears throat> if you are starting out, uh, you should you should use a hard edge brush. Brush. You know, you'll see some of the soft edge brushes in there. They kind of look like an airbrush effect, and 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 it seems nice at first because it's easier to blend things. But your finished project product is going to end up looking a little bit um, like it was done with, with spray cans. Um, you know, the hard edge brush is, is a lot more like, like, like an oil painting stroke. You know, it has texture, of course. If you can find a brush with texture, that's even better. But uh, I, I paint with a hard edge brush, and it has, it's, it's at around 80% opacity and that allows me to sort of mix the colors. You'll notice that as I'm drawing this, um, sometimes I'll, I'll sample with an eyedrop tool, and I have the eyedrop tool um, on a hot key, so I can just push that key and then I can grab any color I want. So I could grab blue here, and then I've got blue, and I could grab this, bl this uh, brown color, and I could, I've got that immediately. And it, it helps me um, really mix colors, and that'll make more sense in a minute here when I really get going. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the sketch we've got here. Um, I feel like we need to sort of make this um, area over here more of an obvious workshop. Maybe we'll put a bellows in there or a uh, fire or something. Okay. Now the the third tip I wanted to talk about is, and this works for me. You know, everything, everybody has a, a different setup and different things that work for them. And this is just what I've picked up that works for me. But f for me, it's always best to paint from dark to light. Uh, when I first got into this and I was painting on the computer, I was used to. Um, <clears throat> drawing because that's what you do you, you kind of start light and then you add the shadows later but with painting um, on the computer and you know I know this isn't exactly it's of course it's not exactly like oil painting but you're you're kind of going for that look at least I am and um, painting from dark to light always gives me a better um, response. I get a better outcome when I'm when I'm doing that. So right now, of course, I'm I'm just painting this this the sketch. But now I'm going to fill in the background. So you can see down at the bottom here I just made a new layer. So layer twenty two, we'll name that um, house sketch. And layer 23, we're going to fill in the color. So I'm going to change the opacity up here on my, of my brush um, to 90, in the 90s and then just start to fill in. I didn't really talk about my color selection I've got up here. Um, when I first started painting, 
I would just sort of take whatever color I wanted to take from the swatches up in the corner over here. And <clears throat> when you do that, um, you tend to end up with a, a piece that looks kind of like a kaleidoscope. You know, you've got every different type of color in, in there. And really what looks best is if you can use a, um, a sort of a pre-selected limited set of colors. Um, and then kind of mix those together to get any other variants of, of colors you want. So what I did is I took the colors I wanted and I made a separate file right here. You can see all these colors up in the, the corner, there are the, the, kind of these blob of colors. And I, I used the, the brush to, to kind of mix them together and get darks and lights of each color. So those colors are the building colors I'm working with. Um, so let me talk uh, for a second about how I mix colors together. Um, earlier I said that you should have your brush to 80% opacity. And wow, this is really looking like a big blob of paint, but it'll look better in, in a minute, I, I promise you. So um, basically what I do is I sample quite a bit. Um, I use the eyedrop tool, it's on a hotkey, and it, what I'll do is I, I'll brush with, um, you know, I'll, I'll put down some, some paint, and then because it's at 80% opacity, it kind of blends with the color behind it. And then I'll sample that color quickly with, with my, um, my hotkey, and then I'll kind of grab that new color I've got and keep mixing it until the, the colors really blend. Did you see how I did that? I mean, those colors are now pretty blending pretty well, and it'll be more obvious as we get lighter. Um, as we start to get lighter. Okay, so I'm filling all this in. It doesn't have to be perfect because, you know, the more I paint, the more I really start to think of it more as um, sculpture. Um, it's, it's really like taking putty and just kind of mushing it around until it looks right. And s being able to sample quickly with a, with a hotkey um, really helps you do that. Okay, so there we go. Got our nice little blob of paint here. And now I'm gonna make a new layer to sort of start to add some of the light. So in this painting, our light's sort of coming from the left and um, kind of above. So the sun is, um, you know, pretty high in the sky. Um, I've got this other brush here. It's, it's sort of a soft um, chalk brush that I'm gonna use and I found this, um, you know, you can find brushes online that people have made that are, they're, they're willing to give them away uh, for free. And, you know, you can make your own. I've, my favorite brush that I use on every painting, I made myself. And you might find that a brush you make sometime um, is really the best brush you've got. Um, and there are tons of brush making tutorials online as well that'll give you an, ins an insight on, on how to do that. So right now I'm sort of just, I'm trying to add some texture in there with this chalk. I'm just being messy, you know, I'm just kind of going wherever I want to. Um, sort of trying to put the light on the left side of these buildings. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, and now I'm going to go back to that same brush I had, which is just a hard edge brush with a little texture on it. But, you know, you could even just use, when you start out, when you pull up the brushes, you know, you've got that round circle brush that's just hard edge. You can use that to, to paint and, you know, make something beautiful. Just, I would suggest putting it at, you know, around 70, 80 percent opacity and just being able to sample it quickly and just going for it.